Hi, I want to talk for just a brief minute today about a concept in philosophy that's called platonic idealism. And I think this can generate an interesting insight into the gender identity, transgender debate. So there are a lot of people who say things like trans women are women or trans women should be allowed to undress in women and girls communal changing spaces or trans women should be put in women's prisons. And I have a hard time even understanding what they mean and why they would possibly say that. Because when I hear the word trans women, I'm picturing a collection of individual people with very individual and unique circumstances that often have nothing in common with each other apart from that they just self-identify as trans women. I define the term trans women as a collection of human beings with broad variety of ex experiences. But I think what other people are doing, I think what a lot of other people are doing is when they say the word trans women, they're not picturing a collection of individuals with varying experiences. They're picturing a kind of model in their head, a sort of abstract idea of a platonic ideal of a trans woman, a kind of universal trans woman. Uh, and this, I think a w an interesting way of looking at this is to go back to what platonic idealism is. Plato was a philosopher in ancient Greece, as I'm sure we all know. He lived in Athens some 400 years BC. Uh, and he had this idea that everything had a sort of perfect version of itself. Let's say you had an apple sitting on the table in front of you. Now that specific apple may have a wormhole in it and it may have a blemish from having been dropped and it may be slightly misshapen. But those things are just the specifics of that worldly material apple. They don't detract or change this idea that there is a perfect apple in the universe. There is a platonic ideal of appleness that can be described with absolute perfection. And you could say the same thing about, I don't know, <clears throat> a table or say a bunny rabbit. Let's say you see a bunny rabbit and that specific bunny rabbit has maybe a scratch on its fur because it got into a fight with a hedgehog or something. I don't know. And maybe it's some of its tail is missing. Well, those things wouldn't detract from the idea that there is a universal model of this. So there's a perfect example of bunny rabbitness in the universe. There's a platonic ideal of a bunny rabbit. <laughs> or a tree. You maybe look at a specific tree and say, okay, that tree's been struck by lightning. It's got a lot of damage. It's missing some branches. But that doesn't change the fact that there exists a universal tree. There is a perfect exemplar of treeness in the universe that exists. There's a platonic ideal of treeness. Tree is an entity that is very specific and it has a universal ideal. And these individual worldly trees maybe have their individual variations, but those don't detract from the perfectness of the idea, the concept of a tree. This is called platonic idealism. And I think that's what people are doing around trans. They're picturing in their head a platonic ideal, an abstract concept of a trans woman that has all of these very specific attributes, like that they are vulnerable, that they are kind and sensitive, and that they are very feminine, and that by some perhaps cosmic mystery, they are in every way just like women, except they happen to have been born in a male body. Now, some people don't even believe that. There's a lot of variation and various beliefs, but it's something along those lines. There's a sort of, when you say the word trans women to a lot of people, they're not picturing individual human beings on planet Earth. They're picturing this abstracted uh, idea, this abstract concept of an ideal trans woman. <laughs> I think this is causing a lot of problems because <laughs> in the real world, we have to deal with real examples of things. Let's take, for example, trans women in female prisons, trans women in women's prisons. The sentence trans women should be transferred into women's prisons only makes sense if you're imagining every time you hear the word trans women, this platonic ideal of a perfect, sensitive, vulnerable, decent woman who happens to have been born in a male body. But if you look at what's going on in the real world, like I do, let's take a look at what's been going on in New Jersey. In the news, it's recently been reported that there are some two dozen males in the female prison estate in the state of New Jersey, and they are terrorizing the women. They are running rampant. Are, the women are terrified. They're frightened. They're in great distress. These are violent, dangerous criminals with serious criminal records and serious convictions who are causing serious problems in the estate. So what's going on here? <laughs> There's two groups of people who can't see the same thing. I can see very clearly that when you say trans women should go into the women's prison estate, 
That means a bunch of men with varying degrees, with a whole variety of different circumstances who simply declare for their own individual specific material human reasons that they're trans women are suddenly being put into the female prison estate. But all of these other people, they're picturing trans women as like this platonic ideal of people who are being put in the female prison estate. And even when you tell this, these people, even when you tell someone who believes in the platonic ideal of trans women, even if you point out a specific example, like, well, that specific trans woman who got put into the female estate sexually assaulted a bunch of women immediately, they would say, okay, that's fine, but that was just that specific one. That was just like the apple with the wormhole in it. That doesn't change or update their model of the abstract, universal, and pure and perfect trans woman. They are always, always, always referring and imagining a universal, perfect trans woman, even though in the real world, there is no such thing. There is no trans woman who is a universal platonic ideal of a trans woman. There are individual people with a very broad array of different life experiences. The word trans woman has almost no meaning. There are some people who are identified as trans women who are, say, the travesti in Brazil. Travesti is Portuguese for transvestite. And this is a subculture in Brazil of gay, almost always black or indigenous, impoverished gay men who wear women's clothes and identify as travesti and live in this subculture that is pretty analogous to transgender in the United States and Canada and the UK. And these are vulnerable people. These are, these are people, they often work in the sex trade. They're often sexually abused and sexually assaulted. And they are murdered at a very alarming and upsetting rate. That is one demographic of people who are identified as trans, who are very vulnerable and need a lot of help. But there are also very wealthy college students in their early 20s who are going to Ivy League universities who are just putting they, them in their pronouns. And they are also count as trans women. These two things have almost nothing in common. And none of these things, the a platonic ideal of a trans woman, these two things, have nothing in common with each other to line up in any kind of way to combine to suss out some kind of platonic ideal of a trans woman in between these two people they don't have enough in common that you could try to find some commonality that would create a sort of general universal picture of what trans is it just doesn't work this idea of a universal trans woman but you see this constantly in the way the other side the other side being trans activists thinks and we have to start working on that i think we have to start making these people realize that this idea of idealizing and abstracting what trans woman means doesn't work. Plato and his model of platonic idealism, that's from two and a half millennia ago. That is a very old, Plato was a very smart guy in his time, but we've got a lot of improvements in philosophy and in our thinking since then. So we shouldn't be relying on this abstract idea of a platonic ideal of a trans woman. We should be looking at the real world and what trans women are in the real world are a diverse collection of males who simply say that they're trans women and take a variety of different actions for a variety of different reasons. Some people who identify as trans women are certainly, I think, have a, a, have a lot of my sympathy. And some people, not so much. But besides the point of whether they have my sympathy or not, none of them have turned into females. Males do not transform into females in the real world at all. <laughs> and once you start looking at the reality of this and stop thinking in abstract, otherworldly, heavenly terms and start looking at the ground level, the material world of what trans is, you'll start to see that sentences like trans women or women don't make sense. The sentence trans women or women only makes sense if you're picturing a holy ideal, perfect ideal, universal platonic ideal of a trans woman. Once you start saying, oh, it's a collection of college kids with they them pronouns and people who just want to get into women's prisons for their own reasons because it's, it's going to be easier on them and it'll give them access to women and some people who are experiencing deep dysphoria and are doing their best to try to live in the, at least the superficial appearance of living as women whatever that means once you put it in those terms that we're looking at a broad variety of human beings with very human circumstances it all falls apart rather quickly so we should start thinking along those lines. I think if you are watching this and you are one of these trans women or women type people, you need to start dismantling that imaginary concept of a universal, sympathetic, perfect trans woman and start looking at the real world, that these are flawed human beings who are identifying as trans women for real reasons that happen in the real world, material reasons, social reasons, cultural reasons, psychological reasons, and sexual reasons 
reasons. And some of these people have my sympathy, some of them don't. None of them have literally changed their sex. We have to treat trans women as individuals, not as exemplars of some kind of magic ideal. And of course, we're universalizing and making a platonic ideal of trans children as well. And that's very dangerous. There exists now in people's heads this universal platonic ideal of a transgender child. We're taking boys who simply have interests and attributes that are considered stereotypically feminine and girls who have interests and attributes that are just considered what we would consider stereotypically masculine and deciding that that means they are resembling this platonic ideal of a trans person and therefore we are assigning them the property of being trans and we're declaring that they're trans kids. And that's dangerous because of course we're then putting them on this medical pathway to put them closer to this ideal of a trans woman by preventing them from going through puberty because the platonic ideal of a trans girl isn't gonna go through male puberty. So you have to stop male puberty from happening because suddenly your child is drifting away from this platonic ideal model of a trans kid. The platonic ideal of a trans girl is gonna grow up into a real woman and therefore is going to have to have a vagina. So you're going to as quickly and urgently as possible taking your kid and giving them surgery to make them into what you think is the platonic ideal of a trans woman. So this idea of a platonic ideal trans kid is basically a proto woman who happens to have been born in the wrong body and throughout their childhood you're going to be correcting that mistake of their body. And hopefully by the time they reach adulthood, they'll become the platonic ideal woman. This is dangerous thinking. This is ridiculous. Women come in all shapes and sizes. Men come in all shapes and sizes. And if your child is male, you shouldn't be trying to model them on some kind of ideals because what you're doing is you're just destroying their bodies. And that all applies, of course, with trans men and vice versa with the sexes in every way. I know I'm talking about trans women specifically in this video, but I mean trans men, of course, too, throughout it. It's just easier to stick with one <laughs> example for the sake of this. But yeah, I hope you see where I'm going with this, that this idea of platonic ideals and abstract ideas is really at the root of a lot of the, the dangerous thinking that's going on in this movement. So that's something we should all probably tackle. That's all I wanted to say for today. I hope that concept helps a little bit in our attempts to communicate between each other and our attempts to move forward with policies and ideas that don't cause damage and harm. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day. Thanks.